Hello and welcome to episode 12 of the Mindful Knitter podcast. My name is Claire and I'm so happy to have you join me on my channel today. Um, this is a channel where we primarily talk about knitting um, and knitting related things, uh, but we also talk about other fiber related things as well, such as crochet. Um, sometimes we'll get into, we haven't much yet, but we'll probably get into things like weaving, embroidery, belting, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then some other crafty things and artsy things here and there. Um, there's also, as you can imagine from the title, a strong mindfulness component. I am a yoga teacher and use mindfulness a lot in my yoga practice, um, as well as my professional career outside of yoga. Um, and then in my personal life as well. So it's a big part of my knitting. And I wanted to make it a part of my channel and share that with you guys too. So welcome again if you are new um, and welcome back if you are returning. I'm very happy to have you hang out with me for a while today. Um, if you want to connect with me on social media, all of my information is in the description below. I am on Instagram and Ravelry as The Mindful Knitter. Um, and you can also email me at Claire the Mindful Knitter at Gmail. So again, all of that information is in the description below. Um, any other things to mention? Oh, if you're curious about where I'm coming to you from, I am coming to you from the southeast of the United States, where I live with my husband, Alex, our two great deans, Murphy and Nolly, and our, uh, well, my <laughs> two hamsters, Crema and Darcy. I don't think Alex really uh, makes any claim on the hamsters. <laughs> he doesn't, he's kind of neutral about them. So um, yes, I think that's all of our intro type stuff. So today we're gonna do what we normally do on our podcast episodes, a lot of um, uh, projects that are going on that are finished, acquisitions, some knit chat and some mindfulness things. Um, for today, our mindfulness uh, segment centers around some self-care, particularly around your hands, <laughs> hand health, and then maybe some like shoulder and neck health too, <laughs> um, because those things can struggle a little bit while we're knitting and crocheting and crafting. Uh, in particular, I've been struggling with my hands this past week. So we will do some of that in our mindfulness segment. So, all right, I think I finally got the intro section nailed down a bit. Uh, took me long enough. <laughs> um, let's get into projects then, shall we? And I wonder if my tea is cool enough to drink. I just boiled the water not too long ago, so this could burn me in front of everyone on the internet. It's still a little warm. Oh, we'll wait on that for a moment. Alrighty, so first things are finished objects. And I've only got one of these on soft blocker for you. Well, I guess you don't need both of them on a sock blocker. So I did finish my socks from last week that I showed you guys. Um, I had started these maybe on Saturday last week and I finished them now. I think I started them on Saturday. <sighs> that sounds right. I don't remember when I started them, <laughs> but I have them, so that's good. Um, yeah, I finished these last night. I actually knitted a lot yesterday. Um, I did not have much time to knit this whole past week. Um, I had a lot less knitting time than I think I anticipated I would have, but getting back to work and, um, and things after being off for the holidays. So it was know, a little busy. It was plenty to do, but maybe I should have anticipated that more. In any case, these are my socks. So here is the unblocked one. I'll show you the, the blocked one. The reason that this one's blocked and one isn't is because I wasn't convinced I was gonna have these done last night, or I thought that I would have it done either late last night or this morning, which was true. I did finish this late last night. 
and I wanted to have at least one blocked and on the blocker to show you guys because I did do texture with this one. So this is the first time I've done texture on a sock and I really wasn't sure like how it was gonna show up blocked versus unblocked. So I only blocked the one sock so that it would be dry and ready to show you guys today. This guy has not been. So here's our blocked guy. And I don't know how well it shows up on camera, but I have some swirl texture going all around the leg of the sock and then also down the foot, not on the bottom of the foot, just on the top of the foot. So hopefully that's showing up okay. This is really fun. The texture, it's just a very, very simple kind of recipe or pattern um, from a Knit Picks book. I don't have it with me to show you guys. Um, I don't have it with me to show you guys, but it is on episode 11 of the podcast. So if you want to, you can go check it out, but it's just one of Knit Picks like kind of sock recipe books. It's a really cool book. They've got different ways to do heels and cuffs and toe up and uh, cuff down. And uh, you just kind of mix and match throughout the book based on what you're wanting to do, which is really neat. Um, so I was, I went through there to look for textures and they had this swirl that I thought would be nice with this variegated yarn. Um, and you can kind of see like what, you know, the yarn looks like just on its own without any kind of texture added. So just vanilla versus the texture, which I think is really fun. So I'm glad I did this. I was worried the texture wouldn't show up very well because of the variegation, but I think it adds a nice, yeah, I think it just adds again, like a, a, a nice texture to an otherwise just... I mean, it's still very pretty, still very pretty in vanilla, but I've done so many variegated vanilla socks. <laughs> this is my 16th, 17th, this is my 17th pair of socks since August. I, I started knitting socks in August since I've knit 16 pairs, 17 since then. They've all been vanilla. So I did 16 pairs of vanilla socks. I wanted to do something different. So yeah, this is um, the, all of the yarn for this is from Nanette Wake Studio on Etsy. Um, the body of the sock is in her bachelor buttons colorway, which I don't think I've seen on her uh, in her shop anymore. Um, she tends to do small batches of things. Um, but this is bachelor buttons. And then the toe and cuff is just from one of her little mini sets. So yeah, so I'm calling these my blueberry socks because they remind me of blueberries, um, particularly when you're harvesting them, harvesting, harvesting them. Yeah, why does that word not sound right to me? Anyway, harvesting them. <laughs> um, and you know, you get the blueberry kind of smeared on your fingers and everywhere. And it's got these like purples and pinks and blue, like of course the blues. Um, yeah, so I'm calling these my blueberry socks. And they are beautifully soft. Uh, I was, it was interesting since I've done only vanilla ones, like this texture on here feels kind of, I guess rough while I'm knitting it because I've got all these little pearl bumps and I'm not used to that. Um, but when I put it on or when I blocked it, uh, like it blocked out to be super, super soft and it's got like the textury pearl bump bumps, but like it's still as soft as sock blocker. Um, but it's still like just wonderfully soft. So I'm super happy with it. It's so interesting, the different, and this is why I block socks when I give them to people. <laughs> it's because look at the difference between a blocked sock 
and a non-blocked sock. <laughs> I feel like this just looks so much more presentable. Um, and I actually didn't block this like on the blocker. I just uh, soaked it and then laid it flat to dry. Uh, but it makes a huge difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know that I, I've seen in a couple places, like I guess this debate of blocking your socks, especially, well, just in general, like, and I honestly don't block my socks usually if it's just for me. I just, you know, wear them and then I wash them and lay them flat to dry after I've worn them. But um, if I was, I was doing sock knitting for gifting for Christmas and I was like, no, I'm definitely blocking my socks. I, and again, I didn't use my sock blockers. I just washed them. Uh, I soaked them in actually eucalyptus eucalyn so that they got like a minty-ish kind of smell, which I thought was fun as I grit a pair of socks for Christmas. Um, yeah, but I definitely like washed them and laid them out flat, soaked them, laid them out flat and, and blocked them in that way uh, because they just, I felt like they looked so much more finished and neat, which this is a great example <laughs> of that. So I'm definitely all for blocking my gift socks. I don't block them for myself typically, but if they're going to a person, then I block them. So yeah. That was these um, and some specs on how I did these. I used, I'm a little, not stra I don't know if, if anyone else does this. I haven't heard of anybody else doing this, but I'm kind of in between sizes for socks. I use Crazy Sock Ladies Vanilla Sock Pattern for cuff down socks on DPNs. And I'm kind of between the small and the medium. Um, the medium is definitely too big. And then the small, it's a little small. So uh, it's not like super small. It's just too small. I'm actually like, these are on like small ones. Like, so these are knit on uh, US ones in the size small. So it's 14 stitches per DPN whatever that would come out to be, 4, 8, 12, 16. So 56, yeah, so 56 stitches. Um, yeah, that's too, too small, uh, but the medium's too big. So what I do, words are hard for me today. I'm sorry, I'm a little struggly. I've been kind of like this all day, but tomorrow's not a good day to podcast, so I have to film today. I'll try to get it together. Um, so the way I have done uh, these socks and I did my Christmas socks this way as well is I use three 1.5 DPN needles and two US one DPN needles. So I've got five needles total, two of them are size one, three of them are size 1.5s. And that gives me a good size. Uh, it gives me a good circumference. Like I'm still casting on the 56. Yeah, the 56 uh, stitches, um, but I'm just using two different size needles. And I mean, you can tell that it doesn't, it does not drastically impact the consistency of my stitches at all. Like I don't get any kind of wavy nonsense from using two different size needle. Like it just, it all blends perfectly fine together. If I am paying very close attention well, after blocking, I can't tell. If I'm paying very close attention pre-blocking, I can kind of tell. Yeah, so I can kind of tell which row was knit on a 1.5 and then the one next to it was knit on a 1. But like, seriously, like, you can't, you can't really tell. So anyway, I don't know if other people do that. It works well for me. It gives me great snug socks that are not so snug that they're uh, mildly distressing. So I love this. Uh, so these are my blueberry socks. I'm very pleased with them. Uh, I actually had a weird phenomenon happen. I've never had this happen before. But I wonder if it's because I've got 
a little bit of like, especially sock knitting fatigue after gift knitting um, for the holidays. I still love knitting socks. I just cast on another pair, but I noticed by the time I was about here on these, I was feeling very done with them. I just didn't want to do them anymore, which is weird. That's the first time I've had that happen with socks. Usually I'm delighted the entire time and I do knit my socks one at a time and I don't have second sock syndrome. Um, I don't know if maybe it was because of the texture, um, just adding that little bit I had to think about and usually um, I can knit socks kind of on just like autopilot and get really into that flow state with, with sock knitting. So I don't know if maybe the texture was what was throwing me off, but um, by the time I, yeah, got to about here, I was like, I'm very done with these and I kind of wanted to put them away, but I cannot leave projects unfinished. Uh, so instead I just kind of knit manically for the rest of the <laughs> evening and finished them uh, late last night, um, which I'm glad I did. But it made me think that I, I might be taking a break from fingering weight socks at least for a while um because I just I don't want that to happen if I'm knitting a pair of socks but if I'm knitting anything like I want to be really enjoying it while I'm knitting I don't want to resent it and feel like I have to get it done so that it's done and I don't have to think about it I mean that's not what I want from my hobby so that was an interesting thing. I don't know if other people have had that happen, but I'm taking a break from fingering weight socks for a little bit. Um, and I did cast on a pair of socks this morning, um, but they are not fingering weight, they are sport weight. So, and this is a lot more satisfying and um, I'm enjoying these a lot. So uh, that's the, the Netweight Studio band from the skein for my bachelor buttons, um, for my blueberry socks. So this pair of socks is actually for my dad. I am knitting them for him for his birthday, which isn't for another like month, month and a half, something like that. But I want to go ahead and get them done because I got a little stressed with gift knitting and I didn't anticipate that happening, but I did. So I don't want to get stressed out about any more gift knitting. Um, from now on, as far as I can help it, at least I'm knitting my gifts in advance so that I can leisurely spend my time with them. So, um, my dad wanted dark colored socks. So this is the Patton's Croy Socks FX in midnight colors is the colorway. So if you want dark colored socks, midnight colors seems like a good colorway to choose. So you got the Patton's Croy FX. Um, and let's see, uh, they send these, you can get these as uh, just one 50 gram skein or two 50 gram skeins. Um, so I obviously got the pack of two off of Amazon. And it is 166 yards to 50 grams um, or 152 meters to 50 grams. Um, it is 75% wool, 25% nylon. So I like the Patton's Croy Sock FX. I, so far in my experience, feel like the FX is softer than the just straight up Patton's Croy sock. I could be mistaken, or I could be sensing things incorrectly, but I think that this is softer. I've done two pairs in FX um, and two pairs in the regular, and I think both of the, both FX yarns have been softer. Um, so yeah, it's just this nice little gradient in dark colors. Uh, you can see it's got like teal, green, and then um, blue, and some dark purple, and it's really nice. I think that these are lovely for manly socks, or for anybody who likes dark colored socks. 
I don't necessarily believe in colors having a gender assigned to them. I feel like they are just colors. Um, but my dad would disagree, so I'm making him manly socks. <laughs> so this is how it's knitting up. I think that looks nice. I'm doing a one by one rib for the cuff, and I do a pretty short cuff. This is just 10, this is 10 rows or 10 rounds. Um, but yeah, I think that's knitting up nicely. I think the colors show up very nicely, but again, it's like a subtle kind of gradient. So yeah, these are fun. Um, this I did maybe an hour for to get this. So this is knitting up much quicker than the fingering weight. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure after I'm done with these, I want to cast on another pair of socks for myself and, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do a sport weight. I think I've already know what yarn I'm going to do for my next pair of socks. Uh, unless other sock projects that are more exciting present themselves first. <laughs> Um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to put this back. This is also in the Netwig Studio. This is a one of like a kind colorway. This was the alternative skein. Um, this is the alternative colorway for the toes and heels for this. So if you could imagine with the toes and the heels of this color, which I think would have been really pretty, but I wanted this to stay kind of like cool tones. Um, so this was a little too much for me for that. Um, I think especially after knitting the cowl and mittens for my niece, which were bright pinks, <laughs> all bright pink. I needed something with cool tones. Um, but yes, so those are the socks for my dad. Um, those will probably be done by the end of the week. Um, as long as I've got, you know, adequate knitting time this week, which I might not. No, I might. I might have okay, because I have a lot of meetings this next week, um, but I think a lot of the meetings that I have, I'm going to be able to knit during, because they're either over the phone or um, there's a lot of, like, uh, passive time during the meeting where you're just kind of, like, listening. So, um, hmm. Yeah, and I'm helping teach some classes this week, but not for yoga, for my like profession. Um, but again, they're gonna be like long stretches where like I'm not doing any teaching, I'm just kind of standing by. So I might get some good knitting time this week. Hmm. I can't remember if I mentioned, this is ginger lemon tea by yogi teas and it is very nice today um it's very rainy it's super i'm uh in the mountains and um it's super foggy with the rain so the view outside i can't see <laughs> past my uh front yard um because it's just all fog um because there's just fog in the mountains right now uh and the, it's raining pretty, pretty nicely. Everyone, it's, it's like light rain at the moment, but we'll get like a big um, kind of thunderstorm every once, every few hours today. And so very short, like bursts of thunderstorms. So it's a very cozy kind of day, um, which is nice. I like rainy days. Um, I like most weather. I'm not really, um, I'm not really picky about what nature is doing. I just, I just figure it adds to the spice of life and I'm just going to enjoy it, whatever it's doing. Um, so of course danger is one thing, but, um, uh, most weather is not dangerous. So anyway, digression. Next thing, next work in project. All right. So this is my, uh, using my advent yarn, the small a day kit by Emma's yarn. And I'm doing the Flora Days pattern, which is um, one of the two patterns that was written for this uh, this Advent kit. So there, she had a crochet one that I think was like milk 
smokeweed leaf or something like that. It was a crochet pattern and then this was the knit pattern. Um, so, oh, needles are getting caught. Ah. So I showed this last week or two. Um, I'm not gonna spend tons of time on this because I have not gotten tons and tons done. If there's ever a week where I have gotten almost none done, nothing done on this, then I just won't show it to you guys because I don't want to, I don't want it to be redundant. Uh, but yeah, so this is progressing. So I am now starting on color number five out of 25 uh, for this shawl. So this is the Flora Days shawl by Laura DeBratz. The information is in the description below. And yeah, so it's this beautiful simple kind of texture that's mostly garter um and it just kind of shows off all of the beautiful colors of yarn um this is going to be a rainbow shawl so i'm very very excited about this um i'm probably going to call it my my rainbow shawl but i also like the flora days name it's a flora days shawl um i won't say too much about how i'm knitting it up because it is a paid for pattern but I think it was like $6 and it's on a Ravelry. So uh, it's a very beginner friendly pattern, I would say. Um, probably not for, I mean, it could be for your first, you know, project or first or second or third project if you feel, um, you know, spicy. Uh, but, uh, you know, it has things like slip slip knit and um, knit front and back and things like that. So, um, Nothing that a beginner knitter couldn't do. They would just have to look it up, like look up little tutorials, but there are plenty of those on, on YouTube. So very, it's a very easy, simple, uh, fun knit. Uh, I'm really enjoying this. Um, oh, and what I think, I was thinking I was going to do this. So I thought since this is kind of like a bigger project, it's going to be taking a while. Again, if I haven't made significant progress on it, week to week. I'm just not going to show it because I don't want it to be redundant, but you're not what I want. Oh, I actually don't. Uh, I guess I can use you for right now. I was thinking of um, putting a progress keeper um, to mark where I am so that I can kind of tell like whether I have made significant enough progress to show you guys. That way I don't have to like go back to the previous episode and see where was I when I showed this to them last week. Um, which is what I did this week, <laughs> uh, this morning. So yeah, very excited about this. It is beautiful and it's soft and squishy. It's, um, I can't remember the proportions within the yarn, but it is super wash merino and silk. Um, and the, and the yarn has like this very subtle shimmer to it, which I don't think shows up. <sighs> It doesn't really show up unless you are knitting it and you are like really looking intentionally, but it's glorious and I'm having so much fun with it. So let's see, those are the only things that I have for works in progress right now and for fit finished objects. Um, kind of keeping it simple after the holidays. Um, I'm about to cast on more stuff. So there's that. Um, but actually I do have another work in progress that I was going to show you that I forgot about. Um, hold tight just a moment. If you want to skip forward by about 10 to 20 seconds, feel free. Okay. This is going to look like it's full of nonsense. <laughs> this is a weaving project that I started a couple months ago, several months ago actually, that I abandoned after I started it. So I need to pick this back up again though because um, this is gonna be going to a person <laughs> fairly shortly. So um, I, I had the idea of using up my uh, baby safe yarn and a lot of baby, not a lot of yarn is baby safe, but like, you know, my things like bamboo and acrylic and like baby yarn that's very soft and hypoallergenic and that sort of thing. 
Um, and I was am weaving a small baby blanket. Um, so I'm sharing this with you guys. I'm hoping that that will keep me more accountable to actually work on this. Uh, because I started it and then put it away. Um, weaving projects don't give me the same amount of stress that knitting projects do for languishing. Um, I don't know why, but they just don't stress me as much. I am, for whatever reason, perfectly fine coming back to a weaving project. Sometime over the, sometimes it has been like over the course of several years that I go back and forth <laughs> with it. So yeah. Um, I really want to get this done in the next month or two though. So honestly, I'd like to get this done in the next month. So yeah, I have this on my loom. Um, and if you're curious about this loom, I can't tell you anything about it. It is a Richard Heddle loom, of course. Um, but I got this as a child like as a child child. I think I was probably like 10 years old when I got this for Christmas one year. And I was ecstatic um, because apparently I've always been a teeny tiny fiber artist. Um, so yeah, I don't know the make of it. It doesn't, it says Easy Weaver, a friendly loom product, Harrisville Designs, Harrisville, New Hampshire. And that's the only information that it bears. So they probably have like little mini rigid heddle looms on Amazon or, you know, any other fiber or weaving company. Um, I don't have any information to offer you on this one, but it's a great size for things like scarves. Um, I did a table runner for my mom. Um, earlier this year, I did like an Easter table runner for her and then embroidered it. Um, so yeah, I'm just, uh, I've got this, these yarns that I'm using. Um, I've also got some light blue and some pastel rainbow yarn. That's a baby yarn. Uh, the blue and the, and the, and the gray, you can see I've got this. Uh, gray on here. Um, yeah, so it's just going to be a, a very fun multicolored kind of woven baby blanket that'll be very light um, and hopefully comfy. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna soak it. Um, it's not gonna be like a true blocking because I honestly I've never blocked a woven project. I guess I'll Google that and see about like, do you block them or not? But I guess I'll Google it too before I actually do it with the soaking it in. But I was thinking of soaking it in like a wool wash, um, one of the non-scented ones so that there's no reaction for the baby. Although maybe I'll look up to see if that's wool wash is okay for babies too. But I would imagine it would be if it's the eucalyptus non-scented. If you happen to know, please comment below and tell me because I don't want to harm a baby. Um, but yeah, so this is a working project too. I'm picking this back up, uh, because I want to get this done in the next few weeks so that I can, everybody's having babies right now. So I've got a number of baby projects <laughs> on the horizon, but yeah, so that is a work in progress that I share with you guys. Okay. This is something I'm going to cast on this week, I think. I shared with you guys this beautiful skein. I actually have two of these. Um, this is Nanette Wake Studio. It is Ice Castle and it is glorious. I am in love with this skein. As soon as I saw it on her website, I had to get it. I just, I didn't even think about it. It was entirely impulsive and I regret nothing. So this beauty, um, I'd mentioned before that I wanted to do like some sort of wintry set for myself with it. And so, um, I think I've decided, I just, I want to turn these into mittens, um, probably fairly simple mittens. I think I'm just going to do very basic vanilla, <laughs> vanilla mittens for myself with this skein. Um, it's probably not going to use up this whole skein. I'm going to use the, I'm going to hold the yarn double. It is fingering weight. 
So I'm gonna fold the yarn double um, and make myself some mittens. My hands are freaking cold when I go out to my car in the mornings these days. Um, and honestly, none of my gloves, I have some nice gloves too. They're not, they don't cut it. So I'm wondering if some nice hand knit wool mittens will do it for me. Um, this is a sock yarn. It's 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. So it's a very high uh, wool content in here. So these are gonna be very simple, I think, beautiful mittens. Um, I kind of am going with a simple just because I love this yarn and I want this yarn to be the main attraction. I thought about trying like a simple cable and I could change my mind, but it smells nice. But anyway, but the plan for this is simple mittens that I cast on. Um, maybe not today. I have a lot of stuff to do today, but probably this week. I think I might wind up the yarn today. But yes, that's going to be very exciting. So this is a lot more whips than I usually have, goodness. Um, so I've got my dad's socks, my shawl, but that's a long-term project. My mittens, those won't take me very long. I knit my niece some mittens for Christmas in one day, so I think I'll be fine. And then I've got my weaving project. So yeah, it's more projects than I usually have going, but again, I think it'll be fine. So yeah, those are, those are my projects. Now, let us get into, do I have anything for sweetening in here? Oh, I do, I remember. I actually put sugar in this. I don't normally put sugar in my tea. Um, I use like stevia leaves, like actual like the dried leaves, not like the stevia powder drops, I leaves. Or I'll put honey, but I actually put sugar in here because I wanted to, I don't know why. Um, okay, so next, I think next, I would like to do an unboxing for you guys. I forgot to mention this in the intro, but we have an unboxing. I'll probably put it in the title so that, you know, people know there's an unboxing. But I've got acquisitions to share with you guys as well. I'm too excited and I'm curious and I wanna do this unboxing. Um, I received this package yesterday and I opened it, the, just the top, and then I asked my husband, uh, should I open these skeins now or do it on the podcast tomorrow? He was like, do it on the podcast tomorrow. So I was so good and patient and I did not open this without you guys. But we're opening it now. So this is from the Netwake Studio. Um, she had her end of year sale and there were a lot of end of year sales that I, uh, partook in. <laughs> um, so this is a little tea and stitch markers and, um, like a little candy. Um, she includes this with all of her orders. So, very sweet. Um, yeah, I got, I got some yarn at the end of year sales. Uh, we're going to talk about that <laughs> during the knit chat, um, because I apparently have developed a problem. Um, okay. So so yes, there are a number of skeins in here. This first one is a full 100 gram skein. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. It's called butterflies. It's her fingering weight. Oh my goodness, you guys. Oh. Oh, it makes me want to cast on some fingering weight socks, but I won't. I I can't right now. I just can't. Uh -huh. But look how beautiful. Uh, I don't know what, what sort of heels and toes should I do. Mm, I love that. So yummy. Uh, so this is her, um, this is her fingering weight, um, yarn. It's 85% superwash merino, 15% nylon. Um, 
the butterflies color away. So that's just, that's just glorious. I feel like the camera is not focusing on words today, so sorry about that. Oh my goodness, that's so beautiful. Okay, what else do we have? I'm gonna try not to go into raptures every time I un un unpack something. Oh my goodness, it'll be hard though. What are you? Oh, okay, so this is one that I actually had been eyeing for a year. I don't know how this lasted in her shop for a year, but this is called Fairy Garden. And it is, you know, a mix of lavenders, this lovely pale pink and speckles, um, some green. That's really lovely. It's super lovely. I love all these speckles. Yeah. Oh, it's so soft and squishy. Her yarn is so soft and squishy, you guys. Oh, this is beautiful. This is different than uh, what I have. I don't think I have any. No, I don't have any sock yarn like this. Um, I'm really glad I got this. This is really, really pretty. This is called Blue Glacier. And again, with the speckles. I am all about the speckles. I feel like all of her skeins are just a celebration of color. That's beautiful. Oh my goodness, goodness, goodness. I almost wonder what it would be like to do this as the body and then use the butterflies for the toes and heel. I don't know. Interesting. Huh, Cause I'll, I will have a lot left over from this because I usually just use a 50 gram skein for my socks. Cause I don't, my foot's not super big. Um, and then I uh, knit like a shorter leg on my socks as you will have seen from my blueberry socks. Oh, I forgot I got this. Oh, I love it when that happens. These are really, really fun. So this is a, a set of minis. Uh, it's the Razzle Dazzle pack of minis. It says Razzle Dazzle 2. Oh my goodness. So it is uh, a total of 435 yards. So I think these are each 20 grams. Um, oh my goodness, you guys. These are really fun. Also very different from anything that I have in my stash. But I had been eyeing these for a while. So they're, you know, they've got the solid, or I guess tonal, um, and then they've got these like little shootings of rainbow throughout. These are magic. Oh my goodness. I'm excited about these. I was kind of thinking of doing a pair of socks like with these. But I also feel like they'd be very, very cute and fun as um, heels and toes on something. Yeah, I kind of love the idea. So this would be 60 grams. I kind of love these for a pair of socks. So this kind of like, what would that be? Uh, it's like a bluey purpley gray and then like a golden like a golden bronze and then like a gray i kind of love those i kind of love those for a pair of socks and then do like a solid heel and toe yeah these are really fun um yeah i had been eyeing these for months and finally decided during her end of year sale like no I just want to get them I really like them a lot um that's great when I do a um an order of yarn I don't look at it again after I order it like I'll track the shipping because I'm one of those people 
um, and I want to know when I my stuff's getting here. I didn't used to be like that. I don't know what what changed. Um, but uh, I don't look at the yarn again, the order, until it's here because I kind of like forgetting what I ordered because then it's like a very happy surprise when it gets here. So I honestly didn't remember any of these. <laughs> it also took a lot longer than usual for them to get here. Usually I get orders from her uh, within like three or four days. Um, but these took over a week. I think they took close to two weeks, but I think that was because of the holidays. And then uh, there was a bunch of bad winter weather in parts of the country. And then um, there's a pandemic going on. So it's probably why, why these took longer. So I certainly don't blame her at all. Um, she stays very on top of things. Um, but yeah, so these are my, this is my happy mail for the week. Um, so wonderful. I'm so, so excited. Um, that's very, that's great. So none of these are gonna get cast on immediately, again, because I'm not gonna cast on any fingering weight socks for the moment, um, but I will be, you know, I will, I will cast on fingering weight socks again um, at some point, probably fairly soon, but I'm gonna do a few palette cleansers first that are sport weight or more. I have, um, sorry, my neck is kind of hurting. Um, I have some DK yarn from Mandy's Makings that I want to make into some socks too. So yeah, I'm just not doing fingering weight for a minute, but those will definitely be knit up and they will be enjoyed the whole time. So and that's kind of part of the thing is that I want to truly enjoy those. Like when I knit them up, I don't want to be resentful of the fact that they feel like they're taking a million years or that my hands hurt. <laughs> um, so yeah. Alrighty. So I wanted to share also some acquisitions from Christmas because I did get some yarny Christmas presents. Uh, since I didn't really have a whole lot of works in progress or finished objects to show you guys. Um, I thought I would show you some acquisitions from Christmas. So I got some really exciting stuff. My, I mentioned this before in either a vlogmas or another podcast episode, but my mom's love language is gift giving. So I got some stuff for Christmas. <laughs> this is how it is every holiday. Um, I actually, I've never bought myself makeup in my entire life because my mom buys a bunch of makeup and then doesn't end up wanting or using a lot of what she has. And so she just gives me what she doesn't want. And uh, same thing with a lot of the time with stuff like jewelry or, you know, all sorts of things. Um, I really, I'm very grateful and very blessed. Um, it's, it's very nice, <laughs> uh, but um, yes. So that, that happens at Christmas time. Uh, and she wanted to support me in my knitting <laughs> this year. So, which she has for a few years past as well. Um, last year I got some very exciting yarn things too for Christmas. But anyway, I'm gonna start with my most exciting one. So I mentioned before, Again, I don't remember if it was a podcast episode or if it was a Vlogmas episode, but I have never had nice knitting needles. All of my knitting needles have been secondhand, uh, you know, no brand secondhand needles or no brand Amazon 75 cent needles. <laughs> so I've never had nice needles. Um, and I have uh, always kind of had the experience of sort of fighting with my needles. None of them have been comfortable. They snag on things. The, t the tips are really blunt. So I knit because I love knitting, not because my needles are very enjoyable. <laughs> so my mom very generously and lovingly got me my first set of nice knitting needles. And she got me the Haya Haya um, Hiya Hiya Sharp Interchangeable Set. Um, so this is the little pack that it comes in. These are the five inch. 
um, which are working well. At first I was like, do I want the four inch? Should I have asked for the four inch? Uh, but I don't think so. I, the five inch are very comfortable and are working well for me. Um, I have been knitting my Flora Days shawl on them. As soon as I got these for Christmas, I swapped over my Flora Days shawl from my cheap Amazon needles to my high, high sharps. And it's like a dream. So here's the inside with all of my needles tucked away neatly. Um, they go from, I think, US 2s. Yeah, so US 2, 2.75 millimeter up to pretty big US 15s. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever knit with a US 15 before. Um, 10 millimeters. Wow. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, um, yeah, and this little flap goes over to, I guess, keep all that kind of securely in. I don't honestly know what this little flap is for, but maybe it does something. Um, and then I've got this little zippy pouch up here where I'm storing my cables. Um, she got me like the like I guess a special set or kit. Um, so it has a lot of stuff in it. I'm currently using the 32 inch um, cable. I have a 16 inch, 24 inch, and 40 inch. Um, and it has slash another number. I don't know why it has like, you know, I don't know why there are two numbers. I also don't know why this isn't focusing on the, that might be better. Yeah, anyway, I don't know why it's got that. Do you guys know? I know that it has, I've never had nice, inter I've never had interchangeable needles. Well, no, I, I take that back. I have had interchangeable needles before. They were not nice. Um, they were a fight to knit with. They hurt my hands. Um, they were, they were a struggle. Um, so I don't know why they've got that. I know I've got these like little things on the end that I guess like these it says cable connectors I've got two different cable connectors and I don't know what that's for exactly if anybody could enlighten me that'd be great so okay so other things that it came with so it's got the cable connectors um it has some of the high high tapestry needles um interchangeable tip adapters um well, interchangeable tip adapters which again i'm just not super sure i don't know i should probably look this up and see um it has these little end stoppers um these are really cute they are glass like little glass beads basically I'm trying to Hopefully that's focusing better. There. It's like little gold leaf in them. So those are pretty. I really like those. It's like dichroic glass. Um, Haya Haya. These are the small Haya Haya cable connectors. Again, I don't really know what the cable connectors are for. Um, I came with all kinds of gubbins. There's another tapestry needle. I think it came with three tapestry needles. It came with these little snips, these little snip scissors. Um, and this is like the dog one, which is really cute. You can see it has little dog ears. Um, yeah, so they're like little snips, which is so cute. Um, it has these pan, the high high panda panda and stoppers which are so cute they're knitting socks so cute um they told me what this is but i don't remember i know there's a description in here somewhere actually the 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 shop that my mom got this from she, she threw in an extra of those whatever they are i've got these single point adapters large and small 
Again, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what that's for. <laughs> I don't know what these are for. <laughs> I just have stuff. I guess I'll learn. Um, yeah, so they got the bead stoppers, the little panda stoppers. I've got a bunch of little light bulb stitch markers. Um, the puppy snips, this cute little gauge measure. Yeah, same on both sides, which is so cute. <laughs> I think that's so cute. <laughs> um, darning needles, it says. I thought it told me what the little thingy was. Reader's safety pins, it says. I don't know what that is. Yeah, so I don't know what that little ovular thing is. You can see it, like, on here. It's this pink. What are those ovular things? I think the lady at the shop said that there's something about, like, it being a grippy something or other. I'm not really sure. But, yeah. Yeah. So this was my big Christmas present this year, which is very generous and just lovely and wonderful and so appreciated. And I am in love with my Haya Haya Sharps. I am never going back. <laughs> um, yeah, I love them. They make me really happy. They make knitting so much easier. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just, I could go on about them. I won't, but uh, yeah, I completely love them and I'm very grateful. Um, so I won't keep going on and on about them, but I don't know if that's happened to you guys. Have you ever gotten like some new knitting needles and it's like your life was changed? <laughs> um, I'm just, I'm so grateful. Okay, a couple other things to show you guys for Christmas presents. I did get more things but I am going to space it out over the next several episodes because I don't want to do like a giant like I don't want to do like a haul video about Christmas presents it feels weird to me um because it's you know just it's the generosity of others and I don't know I don't want to turn it into a haul video for myself anyway I don't know uh, there's nothing wrong with that I guess just I feel weird doing it so for whatever mysterious reason so uh, I'm going to spread it out, especially since I'm probably going to have less happy mail for a while because I did too much shopping. <laughs> so, and I got plenty for Christmas. I don't need to buy stuff. So this was something my brother and sister-in-law got for me. Um, I've seen this floating around. I've seen it at like uh, book sh shops and things, but I have not gotten it for myself. And I was very surprised and delighted when they got it for me. How much fun is this? So I've already flipped through it and I've already picked out like four projects I want to do. Um, yeah, there's some really cool things in here. Um, I'll show you a couple of things that I'm considering doing soon-ish. But yeah, this is super fun. It's broken up into um, like knits, knitted items like from the movies um, or from the series. And then uh, they've got like Harry Potter inspired things like uh, garments or, uh, you know, things you can wear. And then they have Harry Potter um, like household items. One of the things, I'm trying to be careful not to show you the, the pattern. Um, is this sweater how beautiful is that this is a, a buck beak the hippogriff sweater and it's just it's just beautiful i like i love that so so pretty so i really want to make that um that will probably not be anytime soon 
Um, I also really love these. These might actually be something I knit this winter, maybe. Let's see here. So these are the Expecto Patronum mittens. I think that's beautiful. I think that's really beautiful. I guess I could have shown you this picture. It doesn't have any kind of pattern secrecy on it. Uh, but yeah, those are, it's beautiful. So I really want to make those mittens. Um, this, this is, I, I want to knit this at some point. It's not going to be anytime soon, but this is the Owl Post cable sweater in here. Beautiful. The Owl Post pullover. Um, these are just really fun. <laughs> These are the dueling mittens or dueling. It says mittens. No, it says fingerless mitts. The dueling fingerless mitts. This is all beaded. How fun is that? Yeah. So, oh, and then this was something too. I kind of, I kind of want to do these too. These are the golden snitch socks and mittens. And I think those are really, really sweet. And those shouldn't be too, those shouldn't be hard to do. That's pretty simple color work. Um, so yeah, there's other stuff in here too. I would love to make, this is so goofy. I have to show you guys this. This is Professor Umbridge's cat scarf. How goofy. So fun. Yeah. So there are a ton. Oh, they've also got like stuffed animals and stuff. Like you can make a Cornish pixie and you can make Hedwig and like, it's so much fun. Um, yeah. 28 patterns. This was a really fun present. I'm very excited about this. If you love Harry Potter, I would recommend this actually um, as far, well, I recommend it in as far as I have not read it or tried to use any of the patterns yet, but, or tried to make any of the patterns. But face value, just looking through it, this is really, really fun. And I'm definitely gonna make stuff out of this. So uh, I thank you to my, my uh, brother and uh, my sister-in-law. This was a cute gift, very thoughtful. Um, that's gonna be fun. And then my mom got me uh, this sample pack of Wool of the Andes Worsted. So this is a 10 pack. And I know there's a glare, but I don't want to take it out of the packaging for obvious reasons. It's very neat and organized like this, and I'm not messing that up. <laughs> but yeah, um, I've never knit with the Wool of the Andes from Knit Picks. Um, so I think that this would be great to try out. Um, mm, I don't know if I've knit with worsted weight, but I was kind of considering maybe doing the uh, Expecto Patronum mittens with the Will of the Andes yarn, because I hear from a lot of people that this is good for color work. And, you know, I mentioned in the previous episode that one of my, um, I guess like goals for this year is to do more color work because I haven't done much color work before. Particularly I wanna do stranded color work because I haven't really done it. I've never done strand color work before in my life. All the color work I've ever done is just me making stuff up <laughs> and saying, I want a color here and a color here. And then I just kind of make the yarn do what I want. Um, I want to try stranded color work. So that is something I'm considering doing with this. I'm also considering making a sweater out of this <laughs> because I kind of want a rainbowy striped sweater and I like all of these colors. Uh, minus the yellows, I probably wouldn't do the yellows for a sweater for me, but um, I don't 
this is 500 grams of worsted weight yarn, which is plenty to make myself a sweater. Uh, worst case scenario, if I needed some more, because I do like my sweaters to be a little, like they don't have to be quite this like flowy, but I do, I don't wear fitted clothing. Um, unless like I have to, um, cause sometimes it's more practical. Like you want your clothing to be closer to you for, you know, things like, I don't know, like aerial silks or like for dance. I, so my other love is dance. I am a semi-professional dancer. Uh, so I have to wear fitted clothing for dance, <laughs> but out and about in my daily life, my clothing is more like this. So anyway, I digress. Um, I probably have some more worsted weight somewhere or another that I can sub in if this, if 400 grams is not enough or yeah, 400 grams isn't enough, but yeah. So kind of considering using this for coloring, color work, kind of considering using it for the Expecto Petrona mittens. I was thinking maybe this guy and this guy and maybe adding a third color with this gray. I don't know. I also really like the idea of doing a rainbowy sweater, but without, without the yellow. I don't know. I'm kind of torn. So it's a hundred percent Peruvian Highland wool. I'm not sure. It's not super wash, so I'm assuming that if I, whatever I make is going to be hand wash. It says hand wash on here. Hand wash dry flat. And I don't really mind hand washing my hand nets. But yeah, I don't know. What do you guys think? Because I like these colors to get all together. I think they're very cute. So I don't know, we'll see. And we did order, or my mom ordered this off of Amazon. So there's a lot of nitpicks items on Amazon if, if you're not familiar. Um, I typically like to try to get directly from the company or the supplier, but you know, in a pinch, they, they've got a lot of different, they don't have everything from nitpicks on Amazon, but they've got a number of things, including these kind of packs. So yeah, I'm excited about these. Um, and if you like any of these colors and you're curious about what they are, uh, and you want them for yourself. This is Cloud. We have uh, Lake Ice Heather, Green Tea Heather. I love this color. Um, Blossom Heather, Wonderland Heather. I love those. I really love those. Clarity, Pink Posy Heather, Creme Brulee, Ciel, and Haze Heather. So, yeah. I'm excited about these. I was very happy to open those up for Christmas. So, I just don't know what I'm going to do with them. But, yeah. I've never gotten, like, a big pack like this before. Um, it was very exciting. But, yeah, part of me really wants to make this into a rainbowy sweater. And what I would probably do is I would probably grab another gray that was kind of similar to this gray for any like kind of extra that I needed to get enough yardage or um, weight for the sweater. But yeah, we'll see what I do. I could try doing strandy color work with a rainbowy sweater. Like kind of simple, like the ombre kind of thing. Mm. You guys, I might be casting on a rainbowy sweater. Okay, okay, let's not lose our nonsense. Okay, we'll just 
We'll think about it. We'll think about it. No rash decisions. That could be really fun though. All right. So that is uh, the acquisitions segment for today. So let me know in the comments, please, what you prefer. Uh, would you prefer for me to do the knit chat after uh, acquisitions, uh, you know, talk about knitting related things or fiber related things or knitting life or whatever? Or would you rather me go into the mindfulness segment next? Um, yeah, I don't know which one people would prefer because uh, there might be some people who don't really care about knit chat and so they want it at the end. Um, but there might be a lot of people who don't really care about the mindfulness segment, so they want it at the end. I don't really know. Um, so if people have a strong preference or something they feel like would be more helpful to them, then please let me know. Otherwise, I think I'm just going to do mindfulness and then knit chat. So, uh, yeah. So, um, getting into our mindfulness segment for today. Um, and I realized that I forgot to grab something that I was going to use for this. So I'll grab a quick replacement. I'm sorry I've gotten up twice now. I hope that that's not too, too messing with the flow. Um, I was going to grab some oil, but instead I have lotion. So for today, instead of doing like a mindfulness practice practice, like a meditation type thing or something like that, or mind, knitting mindfulness, um, my hands hurt a lot, which is one of the reasons why I'm taking a break from fingering weight socks. Um, particularly my thumbs and all of this area and then down into here, um, it's hurting on both hands. Um, part of it might be that it's really cold where I am and so it could be weather related or temperature related. I also think it's because I've been knitting socks a lot um, and it puts a lot of pressure on my thumbs because I do tend to knit kind of tight. So I am going to endeavor to knit a little more loosely. I'm also taking a break from fingering weight socks, but it made me think about, uh, you know, self-care um, as a knitter and part of, um, Practicing mindfulness, I think, is paying attention to what our body needs. Um, and that's part of mindful living and mindful practice and mindful knitting. So um, I thought I would share with you guys today a little bit of a self-care practice in the form of self-massage um, for your hands. So um, I don't normally take off my wedding band, but I am for the moment because I don't want to get lotion all over it. <coughs> so... Um, you know, I'll also throw in a couple other like stretch type things. Um, but yeah, so I will, uh, premise this by saying I am not a licensed massage therapist. Um, and I'm a registered yoga teacher, uh, with Yoga Alliance, but I am not a massage therapist. Um, and my professional license also has nothing to do with massage. So take all of this with a grain of salt. If something feels uncomfortable or unpleasant or even painful, please don't do it. Um, you know your body. I know nothing about your body. Um, so if you have, you know, things your doctor has told you not to do, if you have injuries that you're a little skeptical about, like, please be careful and be mindful of yourself and your health. Um, don't do anything if it could harm you. Um, I am offering these as potentially helpful, uh, and, and probably pretty harmless for most people, um, kind of suggestions, but like, you know yourself and your body. I don't know your body at all. So don't hurt yourself just because I am sharing some ideas. Um, please. If, and, and if you do have, if this, if these practices are not right for you, but you are experiencing like hand pain while you knit or from knitting or crocheting or anything else, um, then maybe ask your doctor, 
or ask, you know, about physical therapy or, you know, something, um, please don't just suffer for no reason. Um, cause that's not good for you. And you know, you're important and I care about you. So please take care of yourself. Um, all right. So a little bit of hand massage. If you want to pause the video and grab some lotion or some oil, um, that can be a really nice addition to this. Um, it helps, you know, you go over your skin more smoothly, um, but it also helps with moisture, which is good for us. Um, so if you want to pause and go grab that real quick, feel free to do that now. I'll assume that you're back. So I have here with me, I usually use an Ayurvedic um, body oil, um, it's a medicinal oil, um, but I forgot to grab it for the video and it's gonna be a whole ordeal for me to like go and get it from a different, completely different part of the house. So instead I'm using, uh, this is a recent acquisition that I don't think that you can see very well. Because again, I don't think it is focusing on words today for whatever reason. So yeah. Ugh, okay, I don't think it is. It's called Farmhouse Fresh is the company. And this is Sugar Moon Dip, um, Back to Youth, Ageless Moose. Mm. Eh, not super into that. I'm not really, I don't buy into the whole like ageless culture thing. I feel like aging is a privilege. So, eh, but whatever, they can call it whatever they want. It smells great and it's very moisturizing for my hands. So, um, I don't mind so much. Uh, this is a cool company that I just recently discovered. Um, they have a lot of uh, all natural, but also organic and um, cruelty free, paraben free, sulfate free, um, just kind of like thoughtfully made pro body care products. So, um, and the sugar moon dip is delightful. It smells great. This was also a gift that I received from my father-in-law. Smells really good. So anyway, you've got your moisture. You don't need moisture to do this, uh, but if you have it, then go ahead and grab it. And go ahead and get a generous amount, I would say. You don't have to slather yourself, but I would say like a generous amount. Like I'm getting this much for my lotion, um, and I might get more in a moment. Um, but you want, you want to be able to glide smoothly. Um, you can always wipe off excess later, or wash your hands um, if you want. But... Uh, feel like having a little more is better than having too little um, or having a little too much is better than too little when it comes to stuff like massage because you want it to glide smoothly um, and so I just like to start by warming up my palms warming up my lotion or my oil and maybe starting to again mindfully bringing attention to your hands as you spread whatever moisture you've got, or if you're not using any kind of moisturizer, then just kind of warming up your hands. This is kind of gentle. We're not squeezing hard or anything, just kind of gently warming things up. Kind of increasing some blood flow to the hands, to the fingers, maybe grabbing from the wrists and pulling out a little bit. I'm going to grab some more moisture. We're starting to get into a little bit of this care right here by pulling. Again, whatever's right for you. It doesn't have to be hard pulling. It can be gentle. I've got just like a good firm pull going on. And we're starting like about above the wrist and coming down over the wrist, over the hand, all the way to the tips of the fingers. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do some stretches here. So just some light pressure, pulling the hand down. Again, you're not like pressing on this real hard. It's just light pressure, just encouraging the stretch through the top of the wrist and the hand. 
and gently kind of letting it come back up. And I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the other side as well. Also, your body is different from my body. So when you're doing these stretches or massages, some things might not feel as great for you. Don't do them. Um, your body might not stretch in the same way as mine. Don't try to make it. Please listen to and honor what your body is needing. This is all about self-care. That's nice. And again, gently and slowly letting it come back up. And we'll go the other way as well. So just kind of gently encouraging the hand to go back, stretching out all of this stuff. And if it feels nicer, you can do it from the palm or you can do it from the fingers. Slowly coming to center and then going to the other side. Very nice, kind of a classic interlacing the fingers. Oh, that's nice. And pressing the hands out and away from you. Oh, that's nice. Oof. Oh, so good. And this can be a really nice kind of stretch too. Kind of just bringing the backs of the hands together and letting the elbows just kind of hang down. Somehow, this can feel a little different than um, using one hand to help the other hand. And gently bringing it back up to kind of center. Right, we roll the wrists in one direction. Here's some crunching in my left. Kind of get the fingers into it too. So you're not just, you can just do this if you'd like, but I'd encourage if it feels good to get your fingers into it also. And we'll go ahead and go opposite direction now. It doesn't have to be a giant movement. Um, it can be a small one. Hmm. Very nice. So I'm gonna get a little more moisture again. My skin is probably soaked up what I put on it to begin with. And so now this will help it kind of glide more smoothly. So I'm gonna start with the palm of the hand and I'm gonna get all this meaty bits, all this meaty goodness. And these are just kind of firm firm strokes and if using your thumb doesn't feel very good because sometimes this can you know make your thumbs really tired or hurt you can use your knuckles for this so you can use your knuckles to kind of get into the meaty bit and I like to do that um, because it does hurt my thumbs sometimes to use my thumbs for massage so I'll just use my knuckles instead Getting into all these little meaty bits. And when I find an area that feels particularly like, ooh, I want in there, I'll just kind of go for it. And it's easier with my knuckles than with my thumb. <laughs> hmm. You can always pause the video and continue doing that as long as you want to, but I'm gonna go ahead and go into my fingers. So kind of making sure I kind of rub in between this little crease between my fingers and I'm gonna pull up from my finger. Getting into that little crease and then pulling up on this finger. I wanna do some of these more than once. It's so nice. How often do we pay attention to these little spaces or creases or valleys in between each finger? 
not often, at least for me. And again, you're not like pulling this super hard. It's just kind of like a firm kind of pulling and pressure. And then onto the back of the hands, I like to do this kind of deal where I'm getting into in between all these like little like ligaments and in between. So I'm not applying tons of pressure here because there are tons of little bones and, uh, and ligaments and things. So I'm not applying tons of pressure. This is more just like I am encouraging like circulation and I'm getting into the muscles a, a little here, but not tons, because there are lots of like, there are lots of like little, little things in, in your hands, so don't want to mess with that too much. And then I like to have like a firm sort of like wrapping around and maybe both directions on the wrist. Again, not tons and tons of pressure because you've got lots of bones and things in here too. <laughs> so being careful with it all. But the hand bone's connected to the arm bone. So go ahead and get your forearm too. And you can do a little bit of squeezing here. You can do the same sort of like squeeze and pull that you were doing before, but with the whole forearm. If you want some more uh, lotion so that you can glide smoothly. You can get your knuckles and kind of rub up and down your whole forearm. Because we sometimes, you know, get a little hyper focused on one area. We're like, oh, my hands hurt. And so we'll just do something for our hands. But your forearms are connected to your hands. And so, uh, you know, like I was sharing before, like it's primarily this that hurts, but the pain will shoot down here. That's because everything is connected. So getting into the forearms can help with the hands as well. So something hurts with my hands, something's probably going on with my forearms too, even if it's not very obvious. You can get the heel of the hand in there and do a little wiggly motion. Whatever feels good for you. I like to do this this gentle this squeezing kind of thing. Um, mm, nice. And anything, if you need to pause the video and do anything else that feels good, go for it. I'm gonna get a little bit more lotion. I also have very dry skin, so I might be using a lot more lotion than you are, <laughs> which is okay. I'm gonna get into this side. I'm just gonna do some pulls on this side again. And then get into the meaty bits, meaty bits of the palm. And I'm gonna use my knuckles for that so that I don't tire out my, my thumbs. Hmm. That's nice. Hmm. And whenever you feel ready to, making sure that you kind of pinch and get that little in between spot and or are you pulling up on each of your fingers? You can kind of do this like a little rubbing back and forth or you can kind of pinch. I don't know if you can kind of see what I'm doing here, but I'm kind of like pinching. Or you can just kind of like rub back and forth, but I kind of like the pinching method. I don't know if you can see how foggy it is outside. It's nice. Hmm. 
one of the things I like about using like a nice like herbal oil, like a medicinal oil, like an Ayurvedic oil, or using like a, a, a nice hand cream like this is that you also get a little bit of the, uh, I guess like a type of aromatherapy <laughs> as you're doing it as well, because it just smells so nice. You know, and one thing I forgot too is making sure that we get this uh, the very outside edge. Like this is really meaty right here. And so I also like to make sure I get that guy. I just kind of rub on the, the knuckles. I think I forgot to do that on the other hand. So if you wanna get your other hand with that too, then feel free. Ah, that's the stuff. Mm. I didn't even realize till now, but a lot of like the ache in my hands is coming from right here on my left. Interesting. Yeah. Mm, that's good. All right. Then moving on to the back of the hand and just kind of like pulling you know, firmly, but you know, not like rough, kind of like a gentle firm, just kind of pulling. mostly just increasing some good circulation. Ah, right there is real nice. That meaty, it's not quite as meaty as the front, but like a kind of meaty-ish on the back right here. I'm not gonna do anything super rough with it, but. Ah, it's super nice. All right, and onto the wrist. Hmm. That just like firm squeezing is really nice on this side for me for some reason. Not so much like the twisting. That doesn't really feel like it's doing a whole lot for me right now. But on this side, just this like, just this squeezing. Ah, oh, it's really nice. <laughs> yeah, so find what feels good for you because, um, you know, what my body is needing right now might not be the same as what yours is. So play around and experiment a little bit and you can always start more gentle and you can add more firm pressure as you go, but you don't want to add, do something super firm and then go, ah, because <laughs> it hurts a whole lot. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. Getting my forearm. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, it feels so nice. <laughs> it's so good. It makes me want it on the other side too. Oh, so good. I'm just gonna do some of these. So this is a very, very simple kind of hand massage that you can do for yourself. Um, oh, so nice. And then, um, you know, for the necks and the shoulders, well, you only have one neck, but we all collectively have many necks, I guess. But um, so for the neck and the shoulders, um, just, you know, like a very, very quick, simple thing. Um, we're often kind of like this, you know, like, and even if we're straight, we're still kind of like usually down and like a little forward. So what I have found very helpful is during at least once a day, but I try to do this multiple times a day, and especially if I'm doing a lot of knitting, um, is I just like open up, I'm gonna try not to hit anything, I don't have tons of space. I like just open up, uh, do a little bit of a head tilt back. You don't have to do that if that's crunchy on your neck, then you can just keep your neck straight up. Um, but I like, I open my arms up wide, out like a T and then back, so that I am opening up my whole chest and my shoulders and my shoulders aren't up, they're down. So if it helps to kind of roll them back and down first and then kind of reach back with the arms, with the palms facing to the front. But you can flip them to where the thumbs are down and they're facing to the back and that kind of gets like a bicep stretch too and like an upper arm stretch, which is kind of nice. You can also um, do this like in a door, door frame where you you know, put your hands on either side of the door frame and you let yourself lean in through the door and you kind of let the door facilitate that like opening up of your chest and your shoulders. Ugh, 
and I definitely I need to do it with my neck going back a bit um you don't want to like super go back with the neck and crunch the neck a ton uh because we don't want to like hyper extend your neck but um yeah that opening I'm already feeling better <sighs> after doing that like opening um but yeah and so anything else you feel like you need for your hands So that's uh, our short little hand stretch and massage for today. Um, oh, I forgot something actually. This looks weird, but it's it's really nice. It's this. Oh, that's so good. So your it's like your wrists are staying connected the whole time, and you're just rolling. And you want to do it both directions, and you're getting like a nice stretch with this you're also getting really good mobility um since your wrist is against the other wrist you're also getting like it's just some firm but light pressure i'm gonna go the other direction um so it's almost like you're getting massage at the same time on the wrists this is great it looks real weird but it's real good <laughs> again if your wrists will allow you to do this so listen to your body. You're also kind of like getting onto the backs of the hands as they roll against each other. Mmm, good stuff. Actually, my hands feel a lot better after doing that. I'm glad I remembered to throw that one in. So I hope that that was helpful. Um, you know, I am not endorsing this product as far as like, I'm never sponsored by any of the things that I show you. I don't have a big enough presence on YouTube to be sponsored by anybody, let's be honest. Um, but this is a product I really love. Um, there might be other products similar to it. I found this really to be helpful for me for my hands when they hurt from too much knitting. So I wanted to share it with you guys just in case. Uh, this is from the company doTERRA. So they are a, an, an essential oil company. It's called Deep Blue. And this is the stick. They've got this in just like oil form too. Um, but this is amazing. Uh, if you're curious about the blend of oils, um, uh, menthol 10%. And there are other products that use menthol. So I think like, is it Ben Gay that has menthol? I know that there are other products that are for like pain and that are topical products that have menthol in them. Um, but that's the, the main active ingredient, it says. Um, but it also uses uh, copaiba, 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 copaiba oil. Um, it's C-O-P-A-I-B-A, -A, um, which I've seen in a lot of different um, essential oil mixes, like for pain. But this stick has been great. And I love the doTERRA stick because it is like, like it's almost like a deodorant stick or like a glue stick kind of situation where I just like put it on like this. And it's great. I put it on often at night before I go to bed. Um, and I do notice a difference between the nights where I use this before I go to sleep and the nights where I do not. Um, but yeah, I would maybe recommend that too. Like there probably are other essential oil companies that have something similar to this. Um, the stick is a relatively new thing with doTERRA. So they, for years, I just used the oil like in the bottle. Um, but I love the stick. This is great because it's got like the carrier oils and stuff with it. So I don't have to like worry about that. Um, but yeah. Also, it says do not use if allergic to uh, salicylates, salicylates, including aspirin, without consulting a physician. It's like with anything else, it, you know, make sure it's okay for you to take because of your medical history, medications you're on, whatever. But I did want to share this with you guys because I have found this to be very helpful for hand pain. And I know it's a common thing with knitters and crocheters and other fiber artists is our hands will hurt. So yeah, again, 
doTERRA might not be the only company that has something like that. You know, Young Living is another really popular essential oil company. Um, there are others that I'm just not as familiar with. Um, and then there are non-essential oil companies too that have products that are like topical for pain um, that you could probably find at your pharmacy or your grocery store pharmacy or things like that. Um, you know, if you wanted to like Google essential oils for arthritis or for carpal tunnel or for pain, um, you know, Google probably has lots of good information. But wanted to throw that out there to you guys in case it's something you hadn't thought about uh, and that could be helpful. So yeah, that is our mindfulness segment for today. I hope that that is helpful to you. Um, pay attention to your body and what it needs and uh, take care of it, please. So yes. So on to our knit chat segment. Um, So I already talked about how I'm going to be doing less fingerless weight knitting for a bit other than my my floor days shawl because I'm using a, not a teeny tiny needle with it and applying tons of pressure. It's a pretty open knit shawl so that doesn't hurt my hands um, and I don't get like it's a longer term project so I don't expect for it to be done quickly so I don't get frustrated with it. Like I want my socks at this point in my life, like I've been knitting a pair of socks a week for so long. Uh, some weeks I was knitting more than one pair of socks. So um, those just felt like they were taking a really long time and I just wanted them done. Part of that was I didn't have tons of time to knit this week and I recognize that. I think also it was just, I think my hands just hurt. I wanted to be done with the fingering weight. So anyway, I'm not, I'm not gonna go over that, all that again. So I already covered that. Um, another thing I wanted to mention, uh, you know, I did my New Year's kind of goals for crafting, crafting goals in the last episode. Um, one of my goals was I want to use more skeins than I buy this year. Um, I'm not going to include skeins that are gifted to me. Um, and I'm just including skeins that I you know, bought, you know, January 1st, 2022 and later. So anything I bought during the end of year sales in December, I'm just not going to count those because that was before I made my resolution or my goal. Uh, and I'm just not going to count those. So going forward, I want to use more than I, than I buy. Um, and so on that note, I ordered some yarn this morning. <laughs> I actually thought about it and found it yesterday and I spent all day thinking about it and I wanted to sleep on it and this morning I was like, no, I want it. Um, I'll show it to you guys next time probably if it's here. Um, I bought two skeins of hand spun yarn because one of my other goals was I want to knit with hand spun this year. And I happened to find um, two skeins of hand spun that were very nicely priced and I wanted to take advantage of that while I could. Um, and then I bought three skeins of sock yarn, um, but one of them was like a color that I really wanted for uh, heels, cuffs, and toes. Um, it's not a color that I have in my stash and it's one that I've been kind of wanting for a while and I just happened to find it on sale. So I was like, yes, I want that. Another one was a color colorway that I've been wanting for over a year and I found it at a good price. So I was like, okay, I'm getting that while I can. <laughs> and then the last one was a, a glorious speckled colorway that um, was also like on a really good sale. And I was like, okay, I want more speckled sock yarn. So yes please. And it was like on their deluxe sock base and everything too, which was cool. So, um, yes. So I, that's five skeins of yarn. Um, so it got me thinking, I, in order to reach my goal of more skeins out than in, I think I'm going to have as just a very general rule for myself, 
that I am not ordering yarn more than once a month this year. Uh, so I've ordered yarn for January. I'm not ordering yarn again for January. Um, you know, maybe extremely special circumstances. Like if somebody, you know, if, if there's like a gift knit that, you know, I have to do for whatever reason, uh, and I do not have anything in my stash I can use, uh, then, you know, maybe I can order some yarn for that or, you know, a knitting emergency. But barring a knitting emergency, I'm not ordering yarn more than once a month. Um, I don't go to yarn shops very regularly because I don't have any local yarn shops. So um, I, I'm not going to count that in my monthly yarn buying rule. Uh, I figure if I am lucky enough to be around a yarn shop, I'm going to get some yarn because I don't have any where I live. So that's kind of a luxury. Um, yeah. So I've just bought five skeins. I've used one skein. So I'm currently at plus four for this month. Um, but the month is young. So I was thinking about it this morning and I was like, no, I think that I'll either uh, break even or I'll be in the negatives by the end of the month with the projects I have planned. So uh, I think I think I'll be okay. <laughs> But anyway, that was just an update for you guys. Um, and I think at the end of every month or at the beginning of every month, however that works out, I think I'll do a little update on the podcast of how I'm doing with that goal. Um, I'll just update you on like how many skeins came in this month and how many skeins went out this month. And I'm not doing grams, I'm doing skeins. So, um, you know, for me, I count a 50 gram skein for a pair of socks the same way that I would count a 100 gram skein for like hats, uh, hat mittens, or for, you know, four grams of four, 400 gram skeins of yarn for a sweater is four skeins, just like one 50 gram skein for socks is one skein for me. Um, yeah, so this this goal is all about like making things less stressful for myself. So that's the system that I think is going to work best for me. Um, yeah, because when I look at my stash, I see skeins. <laughs> so it doesn't matter that this one's 50 grams and this one's 100 grams. That's still a 50 gram skein that I am wanting to use and for to not be there anymore. <laughs> so... And then also like, I don't mind if I use the skein partially, as long as it is over 50% used, then it the counts as out. Um, because if it's over 50% used, that probably means it's now in the scraps box. And um, I'm not counting like my scrappy stuff uh, because I'm honestly excited to accumulate scraps because I wanna do scrappy projects and I don't have enough scrappy yarn for that yet. So yeah, so. Just wanted to update you guys on that goal and um, kind of plans for making that goal happen. Uh, because I think, you know, often when we have a large goal, it's helpful to have smaller steps to get there. So I think that that will be a helpful uh, step or one of the steps for me to reach my uh, more skeins out than in for the year uh, goal. So other things uh, to talk about, um, I think I just wanted to mention to the Huga make along um, in case you haven't seen and if you're interested in participating, that will be starting next week on January 16th, which is Sunday next week. So a week from today, January 16th is the first day of the Huga make along. So um, I've got several people who are wanting to do that. I'm gonna get the Ravelry um, uh, thread set up for that today. Um, so if you're not a member on our Ravelry group and you want to participate in this knit along and you're on Ravelry, then please join the Ravelry group and um, you know get, get participating in that thread on there. Um, my hand still hurts, but on the other side, the side that I discovered <laughs> while we were doing our massage. Um, yeah, so that's happening. I'm very excited. It runs until March 20th, I believe, the first day of spring. 
Um, so I've got the information video up on the channel for that. I posted that, um, I think Thursday this past week. Um, yeah, it has all the information that you need. And if you've got questions, then you feel free to let me know. Um, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. It is a fairly a loosely ruled knit make along. Um, so you can do any craft as long as it's fiber related. Uh, and that includes things like embroidery um, or quilting or, you know, toy making, whatever. Uh, just as long as it's fiber related, it's a cozy make along. Um, so there are going to be prizes. I have at least two prize packages put together. I might have a third. Um, all of the prize packages are coming from my stash thus far and my items. Um, so if you guys want, if anybody wants to donate anything for prizes, please feel free to let me know. That would be so much fun and I would you know, be very grateful um, because you know that just adds to the community fun of the make along. Um, but I have at least two packages, possibly three, um, put together for that so far. And I will share those packages as the make along is underway. Um, but yes, uh, and you can drop in at any time, uh, before March 20th. Uh, so it's not like you have to start, you know, January 16th and that's, you can't join after that. Like you can, you can come on in at any time during the make along. Um, yeah. And there will be prizes for both chatter and finished objects. So I hope to see you guys there for that. You can double dip. So if you're already doing a make-along, you can do this one too. You can use the same project you're using for your other make-along or knit-along. Um, I don't mind at all. So yes, I just wanted to throw that out there to you guys. Um, all of the information for it is on the Huga make-along video, information video that I posted just a couple days ago. So I think that that is it for today. Um, I don't really have any other kind of chit chatty type things for you guys. Um, yeah, I think I'm just gonna get started on some, maybe not knitting. I might not knit for the rest of the day since my hands are hurting, but I might wind up this, I might, yeah, I might wind up this skein of yarn to get it ready for casting on mittens. Um, I might work on my floor day shawl a little bit. I don't know. I think I need to give my thumbs a rest. So yes, I'll be doing that. Uh, I have a special video coming up for you guys pretty soon, possibly this next week. Um, so there's your teaser for it. Um, I'm very excited about this video. Um, I hope I can put it out this next week. If I can't, it, I, it'll probably be the week after. Um, it'll be soon though. It is one that has been underway for a while. Yee, I'm so excited. Oh, I could do some weaving too. I could do some weaving, that won't hurt my thumbs. So hooray, it's good to have multiple projects. Um, and then I'm also gonna be potting a whole bunch of plants today. If you followed me on Vlogmas, you got to meet a lot of my house plants. Um, I do have more than that. And now I've adopted a few more plant babies. Uh, so I'm repotting plants today because um, my house plants, a lot of them need bigger pots. And then I've also been propagating things and they have little roots now and I needed to plant them. and. Anyway, you might not care at all about my plans. Um, I'm gonna sign off for today. Uh, thank you for joining me. Um, I hope that you had fun, I did. And I hope that the hand massage and stretches and everything are helpful to you guys. Um, and I hope to see you in the make along, but if I don't, that's okay. You might be busy. <laughs> uh, but I will see you guys in the next video. I hope that you have a good rest of your week. Bye.